This podcast, brought to you by Anchor, is currently non-profit making and is based on the second edition course book on international history from 1870 to 1945 for Cambridge International AS level history. The First World War served as an opportunity for Japan to increasingly expand its influence in Asia. In this episode, I'll be speaking about how Japan benefited from the First World War and looking at the overall outcome. During the First World War, Japan declared war on Germany, seizing Germany's military bases on the Shandong Peninsula in the north of China, while its navy occupied Germany's South Pacific possessions. In 1915, while the First World War was taking place, Japan issued China with their 21 demands. This included China agreeing to give the Shandong province to the Japanese and to grant commercial privileges in Manchuria to Japan. Additionally, China would not be allowed to lease any more coastal territory to other powers, such as Britain, France, Germany, etc., and was to accept political, financial, and military advisers which were to be sent from Japan. These demands caused a sharp reaction from Britain and the USA, while also angering many within the Japanese government itself, as they believed these actions would damage Japan's reputation. Therefore, the demands were modified. In terms of their economy, Japan was able to take advantage of the First World War, as it left them a vacuum to take more control of economical markets. They supplied goods to the Allies and also filled the trade market of Asia, which was left open as the Allies' focus deviated from their colonies, so they could focus on fighting in the First World War. Therefore, Japan significantly developed their industry and became more self-sufficient as they would rely less on imported goods from industrialized nations. Japan also saw the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in 1917 as another opportunity to expand. After Russia had withdrawn from the war through the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, the Allies sent soldiers to support the Whites in the Russian Civil War against the Bolshevik Red Army. Meanwhile, Japan sent 70,000 men, despite originally agreeing to send just 7,500 men. These men remained after the end of the Civil War, and the British, US, and French forces had already left. However, they eventually had to withdraw in 1922, as they were defeated by the Bolsheviks. While international mistrust towards Japan grew, many Japanese were also criticizing their own government, as the cost of the failed involvement in Russia was high, and the army, which the government had been unable to control, had significantly lost prestige. At the Paris Peace Conference and the Versailles Conference that followed the First World War, Japan was originally able to secure the former German Pacific Islands as a mandate and gain control over the Shandong province of China. These gains would confirm Japan as an important economic power on the Asian mainland and as the main naval power in the Western Pacific. Japan had tried to include racial equality clauses in the terms of the League of Nations, which would set all races as equal. However, this was a failure as leaders in Britain and the USA claimed that their countries were afraid that this clause would increase Japanese immigration into their countries although this reason was largely invalid and unrelated to the equality clauses. All in all, the League of Nations was supposed to be an organisation which united all nations, but what was the point of the Assembly if the League of Nations would not put it in their charter that all races were considered equal in the eyes of the League of Nations? Wilson had the idea of self-determination in his 13 points, as he believed that Eastern European countries should rule themselves, but it was evident that he did not believe in the equality of race globally, as he voted against the Equal Race Charter. Japan's resentment towards the European powers increased after the conference, as the powers reversed their decision to hand over the Shandong province to Japan. Although the province was originally given to Japan, it was now handed back to China, Despite this, Japan was able to maintain some level of influence after deals with warlords. The Japanese felt that all things considered, Western dominance over Japan was clear. Thank you for listening to this episode of my podcast. In the upcoming episode, I'll go over the failure of democracy in Japan. This is the end of the podcast. Thank you for listening.